there's two ways in which this IP data extension can be used as an API. The one would be through its uh, URL uh, extension, which is explained in the API documentation. Now, this API documentation can be found once you have installed the component. It can also be found on our website under the knowledge base for this component. So, on our website, if you are on the IP data page, there is a link here, documentation knowledge base. If you click on that, it opens this page, which one is to how to install the component, set up the IP. Uh, data component and update the IP and exchange rate table and then the IP data API documentation you click on that it opens a page with fairly the similar uh, data as found in your component except that it uses uh, demo URL whereas in your component it actually uses the URL of your website in the example Okay, so let us go through this documentation and see that we are on the same page of understanding what it means. Uh, I'm going to use the, the documentation on the, in the component since it's more useful and it's more specific. So let's go there. Basically, the, it means that you've got a URL which you would query, literally meaning you would replace certain segments in this URL uh, and it will return a JSON object that you can use in JavaScript. So primarily this API would be functional for a JavaScript application or something of the sort. There's many ways to apply this to, com to the, uh, you know, the components you might want to build with this. Um, the idea would be that you can uh, change prices on a website based on the visitor's IP address. Um, or you could give notifications based on the user's IP address. Uh, obviously, you must always remember that an IP address doesn't always mean it is really where the user comes from. It's just where the user wants you to think he is coming from. Uh, there are many ways for today in the technology that's out there to sidestep the validity of an IP address. Besides that, we are expecting that more than at least 90% of our visitors, maybe less but more or less there, are actually just normally serving the web with their uh, server provider's IP address. Um, and in that case, then you can use this API to to populate their IP address in this URL and retrieve a whole list of data related to this specific IP. Now, this URL is built up from, firstly, the URL uh, domain name. Then, uh, this is fixed and must always be in the API call, your domain name, where this application is installed. Then, there is this little string here, index.php. Uh, up to format equals JSON. That is uh, sort of default. Unfortunately, it needs to be there um, until we maybe do a little improvement, but currently it needs to stay. Um, and then comes the IP, the IP. So it's basically and IP equals and the specific IP that uh, your visitor is visiting from or the IP that you want information from. So this is the IP that you put in there. Um, then don't remove the dots between the numbers there. We actually want those dots in. Then there's a key. Now the key might be the most difficult part of this tutorial to explain exactly how everything works. Um, but then again might not be. There is a place in the component settings where the API key is set. Uh, now currently it could be, let's see, um, key equals zero. So currently this this one is set to public. So it builds this URL with the, with the key equals to zero. Now 
let's go to the API option settings and let's change the the key from public to maybe this first option and I want to actually go show you how these keys are selected so we'll click on this here we could also have clicked there and take us to the same place actually okay API settings and we see that there it has the option of public then it has the option of all users then it has the option of users in a certain group users with certain access levels only selected users and then again a public so this is the one that is selected so if you were to select let's let me select one at a time so let's say all users um, this literally would mean that any user on your system which has an account would basically need this private key so we are working on a plugin which could uh, be out soon which would actually uh, maybe add this key to the user's Joomla profile page and you can see the key there um, we're still thinking through and exactly how we'll implement this but for now you could simply email this key to to your user or even go further if you're a programmer and you can actually build here the actual key because this private key is the one that actually you don't want it out in the public um, you want your user name underscore and then this area this part here is the private key and then you want to md5 this whole uh, string and the result of uh, of this md5 username underscore and private key gives us this key and this is the key that is passed via the URL so that key um, will be different from user to user if you understand what's happening here so one user wouldn't be able to get another user's key and use it unless he knows what it uses username or so it's, it's where we are at in in relation to um, building a sort of more secure API trigger mechanism to controlling who has access to it uh, we're always open for ideas this project is on github if you're a programmer please get involved give us ideas start an issue uh, do a pull request make some changes to the code base and let us see where it goes Currently, this is what we've got in place. Um, so, if you were to select uh, users in a certain group, the way the, the user key is built remains the same. The only difference that now comes into play, so you basically have that there, is that you must select, uh, this is a certain group, so you must select those groups. So, you could say, okay, I want... Uh, clients that are for example corporate only my corporate clients uh, on this site actually can use the API for, for that for that matter um, so that will be one way of making a certain closer niche of selection uh, another way would be to say from a certain access level so then basically this access group option can just be blank for it won't actually matter you could you could leave it but it won't matter you then set access levels which would be uh, let's say only staff can uh, uh, groups that are in the staff access level can then by building a key like this query the API um, or you could select um, only selected users and then you can select unfortunately I don't have I only have once you use at this stage on this demo site so basically you'll select the users then which would be allowed to actually query the API so those are the, the five different ways which the API can be limited or exposed depending on how you see it um, in relation to that the user would have the necessity of a, using a key now for our purpose I'm simply gonna use this first one with uh, with it says with with a private key which means all that would be needed is this key here now if I click save and close you would see in fact let me copy this 
and paste it there and then I'm going to click save and close whoops my mistake I must have forgotten that there needs to be a username in it let me go back there otherwise it's going to be confusing that number there is actually build up from James underscore and having the private key as it is so I'm gonna put that in there so you could see that it actually then generates this key okay let's save and close and as you can see it actually generated exactly the same uh, key as we have shown you in the example there this means if I was to click on this link here now because I've got the correct uh, key in there it will actually deliver a result but without that key it won't um, so it's it's what we have got in place currently as a sort of control mechanism as I said before and I've tried to explain here how it works and how you can generate these keys in PHP if you're going to be doing it in JavaScript uh, I would suggest that you would look at the following website php.js it has an excellent function to actually produce PHP results in JavaScript so if you could go under the function listing you'd see it has a whole list of all the PHP functions and if you click on those you'd see that how, how they're able to in JavaScript duplicate those PHP functions now we want you to basically look at MD5 this one here um, so if you're gonna produce those um, yeah those keys in, in JavaScript then I would suggest you looking at this file here and make use of this to, to, to create those keys okay now back to our, our page next up is the return wrapper now what we've done is uh, we've given you the option of putting uh, two brackets um, around the results basically uh, that is helpful in certain JavaScript executions um, and sometimes you will maybe would not want those brackets around it I would suggest you toggle this uh, one or zero uh, or you could just leave it out to be zero but if you want to uh, to to have it in just toggle it and see which one works best for your application um, and then there's the most important part and this is the return mode that's literally where you get to choose what you want what what information you really want this API to deliver back to you now if you don't really set this for example like here we leave it to zero it will return all the possible results available in the database um, because let's say that this specific country's exchange rate isn't uh, there since there are some countries which uh, for some reason we're not able to get those exchange rates from Yahoo Finance um, but then that part of the return set will just not render um, for the most part everything from exchange rates up is in the database and will always be there uh, but it's only on this uh, exchange rate area which they sometimes may not be a value um, but again we're working on that to see in where we, we can you know iron that out um, obviously any suggestions someone who knows a better way of doing this I'll be very very glad if you can uh, assist us um, at the end of the day you just put M equals and if you only want uh, all the country information you just say 7 instead of 0 um, if you only want the country name it's nine um, and that's why we brought this string only option in and what the string only option will do is currently all the results are returned back in an object manner so if you don't want it to be returned in an object you simply just want this string then you can put this s um, and, and, and turn it into one and when the value is one it will only return a string if the return is only one value obviously if it's more than one value uh, for example if it's all country it will remain uh, an object since there will be more than one value in it 
uh, it won't change it to a string. We might look at the possibility of it still changing it to a string. Uh, if you feel that that might be an advantage, I can see that it might be, but it hasn't working that way yet. And if we change it, we'll obviously update this, uh, this explanation here. Um, and then last but not least, we have the uh, base currency. If you have a base currency on your site, which meaning that all your prices are already in this currency, uh, then obviously you would want to, from that base, change to whatever currency the visitor is coming from. Now, you can then uh, query it through the URL. There is a way to set a base currency for the extension itself. Uh, and if you click on here, and we'll basically go back to the page we were at previously, this uh, configuration page, you'd see that there is the base currency and you can actually change it to any of the currencies that are installed. Um, if we have missed any currencies, then please let us know. As far as I know, the table is complete. Okay. That, so that is the documentation for the way that you would use the URL to query the database and return a JSON object. There is another way for you to actually make use of this extension, which would be to use PHP directly in your application where this component is installed. We actually have an extension where we have done this, and it is on GitHub. So I would go there momentarily to show you how we've done it. But for those who would simply want to use the URL, then this would be all that you would need to see. And I hope you enjoy what we have made available. We are planning to eventually build modules that makes use of this extensions uh, API uh, and also put them available and uh, then you can see how we have done it and possibly improve it or use it any way you can. So that is the API documentation for the URL. Now let's look at the way that you could directly use PHP without querying the URL, which obviously would speed up the process by going to this extension that we've got on GitHub. I would of course uh, expect that you know PHP well enough to follow along. I'm not going to try and explain for people who do not understand PHP that that well. Um, we have basically a, 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 a static class here, uh, also, sorry, an abstract class with which we run a cron job of changing uh, IP addresses into country names. So what we've done is uh, we first look whether the API uh, component, the API data component is actually installed on the site. So it asks whether this file exists. And if it exists, uh, we basically do a few other things because we're going to update uh, uh, the specific file system and stuff. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to jump into here where we basically register the, the class that is inside of this IP data PHP file found in the IP data component. Okay, so having done that, we now have access to this, uh, this class and we can basically call it and use the functions that are available inside of the um, IP data component. So to really understand uh, how to use the IP data component in any other application would be simply to go look at components, obviously in the back end, that would be the administrator side, components, IP, uh, com, IP data, helpers, and IP data PHP. This is the only file you really need. Um, inside of this file is a class with which you can then uh, query uh, with you know any IP and get a result set. So this is how we've included it in this application. So to understand how this uh, this class works would be to go to GitHub and look at the IP uh, com IP data uh, extension. So let's do that. Okay, here we are on the IP data Joomla three components uh, GitHub page. We go to admin and then to helpers 
and there is that file that we included earlier and as you can see it's a simple class uh, and you can read through it and here in its constructor it, it gets the IP address and this, the, the currency base um, it then sets the currency base to the, the variable inside of this uh, class and checks whether this is actually an IP address. If not, it returns false. Otherwise, obviously, it goes on executing. Um, and I think if we come to where you then, yeah, this this basically is when you initiate the the class. Once the class is initiated, you would use the get info method, uh, also called function, inside of this class with the passing it the mode and whether you want it to be a string if it's one result or not if it's if you want it to be a string you would basically the second value would be one um, it will then use this method to return the values that you need so you could read through this file to see exactly how we actually gather the information and then you can parse that information directly if I go back to the place where we uh, used it in that previous extension, you can see here we actually initiate that uh, function. We pass it the IP and we, we don't give it a currency because we want to use the, the default. Uh, well, actually, we're not going to use currency. We, we simply want the country name. So currency is not important. Just put a false there. Uh, we only give it the IP, um, and then if there's a result, we we put that into the IP data, and we get info, and we want number ten, and we don't, and we want it as a string, so it returns number ten returns the country name, and we put the country, oh, sorry, the country code, and we put the country code in here. Let me just show you uh, what, what it will return. So you're back at the uh, components uh, three admin helper, uh, the the, play, the file that we had included. If you go back to the function of get info, you would see that uh, the return value of mode option number ten is country code three. So we basically wanted to return country code three. And we add the, the one here to string because when it goes to switch mode, okay, um, we have the option here. If it's number 10, obviously these are all uh, when it's more than one value. Here is one value. If it's a string, it simply returns the string. If it's not a, if we don't say we want a string, then we will actually return it as an array, which later converts it into an object. As a JSON object, return to JSON object. Okay, so that would be where you would see the list. Now, this list here uh, agrees with the list in the documentation. It's exactly the same list, actually. Um, and so we just pass a 10 here, a 1, we get that code, and we save it to the database in this extension. That's how you would use the component. Uh, directly in another component on the same Joomla website. If you are trying to get information from another website, I would suggest you using the, uh, the URL API and basically just query it with the given information. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the API documentation. I hope it's been helpful. Um, this is an open source project, so I don't expect it to be uh, that exhaustive. Um, and I am really excited for the for those of you who want to get involved and in making this application better. Um, and uh, hopefully it will be of service to many. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.